What's going on, y'all? We got a special one right here. Yes, we are back again, and we have my very own sister. <laughs> okay. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Michaela. I'm her sister. <laughs> and what else? <laughs> no, that's good. Sure, okay. that's good enough right there. <laughs> yeah, we are just going to jump right into it. And here is to our second interview. This is going to be our best one. For real. <laughs> yes, All right. Sir. All right, y'all. So first question, of course, I know the answer to this, <laughs> but right. how long were you a witness? So basically, I was born into it. So I want to I want to say maybe 16 years, 17 years. Yeah, I, oh, think I said that's 17 about years. From the beginning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was that's like all I knew yeah. <laughs> growing up. And most of them know because I talk about it all the time, but like how deep were your roots in the organization? So we're third generation JWs. Um, like our grandparents are in it and then our parents were in it and they got baptized. So, okay. yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, so this question is kind of juicy because we kind of know the story behind this, but did you ever get baptized? Heck no. <laughs> you ain't signing the contract. Listen, as far as I got was what being in the school. And that's it. I didn't like that either. You know, <laughs> I think it was just more so like, because, you know, my sister over here, she kind of made it hard for me to like not do something because she was like, oh, in this school, baptized, <laughs> doing talks, doing little interviews. And I was just like, oh my God. So I did the bare minimum. Yeah. So I did the school. I would try to just say I'm sick most of my talks. You know how I'm not going to do my talks. <laughs> it's actually so interesting that you bring that up because you know how we always say like when you get pushed into doing something, you're kind of getting pushed in because of other people. And right. it's more so, it's, it's not, not really... you want to. Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. really coming from you. Either you're feeling like you need to... I don't know, make up for something because that's how I felt. Like yeah, I felt yeah. like because I didn't have like elder parent or mm -hmm. the pioneer mom like that I needed to make up for it in a yeah. sense and that's why looking back I was so like zealous you know, like, yeah, yeah. So like zealous. something wrong with you and that's she, how they yeah. it. exactly and she yeah. kind of brought up the same point like she did it because I was doing it yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, they, they put that on you like if you got the sibling that's doing all that then yes. they're like oh what, what's, what's wrong with her yeah yeah and the pressure is real you know what I mean like it's not like they give you time and they're like, no, do it when you feel ready. Cause you know, like they're so big on preaching, you know when you'll be ready, but no, the heck you don't. Cause you don't even get the time <laughs> to get to figure out when you're ready. Cause like, I remember like every meeting we were going to, especially like when my sister got baptized, it was on to me. Like, are you gonna get baptized? Are you gonna get baptized? Like, you yeah. know, the one elder, you know what I'm talking about. Of course. He was always like, yeah. are you gonna get baptized? Like you see your sister, she's doing so like, so it was never just, when you're ready it yeah. was always it was just enough. it's like recruiting you know what i mean Literally. so it was just like how many more people can we get you know what i mean to make your kingdom hall look good mm -hmm. right. to make the elders look good that's what it basically basically came down to yeah because more so, people they get the more recruits they got to go get more recruits yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. you know like they'd get more desperate because they were trying to recruit eight ten year old kids you know what i mean yeah. like they don't know what the heck they want they don't know nothing yet so it was just crazy, but I was just like, heck, you know, like, y'all be happy with the school that I'm in and <laughs> call it a day. Like, For real. I like how you brought that out about the kids, because then yeah. even the kids are required to go recruit more kids at school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Who's going who's gonna to do that? Like, truly, who's going to actually But we knew do that? some people who did that. Like, some, yeah, like, people, I did their that. children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, That's they had me doing it, too, though. Like, you know what I mean? It'd be, like, so weird. And they would always ask, like, did you talk to that one girl? And da 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 And I'm just like, I'm we're in school. Like, I'm going to talk about yeah. stuff. Yeah. Facts. Carry this watchtower in your backpack. Carry this Bible in your backpack. Like, no. What is yeah, going on? weird. Like, I'm just trying to go to school. Okay? Yeah, and, and be, be normal. normal. <laughs> yeah. Be normal. Facts. But they didn't care about that. You know no. what I mean? They don't... 
think about the backlash or just how cruel kids can be. And I can only imagine nowadays... It's even worse. It's even worse. Mm. So they don't care about that. So really, I just feel like... Well, we talked about, about this before goal. because a lot of the organization, like the people who are actually still in, don't know about this. But like the Norway case, for example, um, a lot of it stemmed yeah. with children. It's like um, child abuse to disfellowship to just yeah to yeah. disfellowship kids. But right. whenever you are pushing a child to get baptized, then you are also signing them up to possibly get disfellowshipped. Yeah. For and real. for somebody who is 10, 11, 12 to be disfellowshipped or something like that, like that's that's insane if you think about it because the disfellowshipping yeah. practice in the Jehovah's Witness organization is like, okay, if you get disfellowshipped, you cannot speak to mm-hmm. your family. That's how it's supposed to go. Right, yeah. if you yeah. really follow the rules. And then like, think about giving a kid a credit card or giving mm-hmm. a kid like a house mortgage yeah. or a car note. Like that sounds stupid. Yeah. But then, it's stressful. And that's just temporary stuff. Like a car yeah. note, not your whole life. But that baptism stuff is like yeah. you sign this dotted line forever. Like anytime you mess up from here until mm-hmm. you get old and die, yeah. like we get to torture you over that. There's a reason that people that like people can't go into the military until they're 18. <laughs> yeah. Or buy a liquor. Until you're 21. <laughs> yeah. like, you know what I mean? So there's a reason those things are put into practice. And they even say from their own stages like like your frontal lobe isn't fully developed yet, mm-hmm. but they talk about it in relation to relationships. <laughs> you know what I'm but they should talk about it in relation to making a lifelong commitment with mm-hmm. a religion mm-hmm. as well, because you don't even you don't know all of your options. Like there, there are a ton of options whenever it comes. But that's to the, that's the whole reason, though. They want to get to them before they know that they have exactly. options. Yeah, so right. really, it's just a form of manipulation. Honestly, you know, kids are the easiest you know living human beings to be manipulated on because they don't know any better and of course like they're gonna look up to an adult who's looked at to be praised for and stuff so that's what they aim for is children yeah Yeah. definitely okay so we know you never got baptized but did you ever try to get baptized Yes, I did actually. Um, <laughs> now it's coming back to me a little bit. Uh-huh. I'm gonna refresh my memory real quick. Um, I remember she was we so went, young. We were. I was so young. Yeah. Like what the heck? I was like, younger than our little sister Mimi. Yeah, so I don't I was, remember how I was old you really were, young. but I know you were young. I, I had to be like ten. Like ten. And um, I did. So I went to one of our elders. Mm-hmm. Remember that we were just a little bit more closer to family wise. Yep. And I don't know if he just misunderstood or something. I think at first he thought like I wanted to be an unbaptized publisher. Uh-huh. But then I think like when I asked again, he was more so like, I don't think you're ready. And da, 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 da. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame him, y'all. Like I used to just, I had no filter. Like, especially when I was younger. Like I just said what was on my mind. You know what I mean? So no, I'm not mad at him for it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the reason was that he yeah. said no to her, but I was surprised to even hear that because you don't usually hear anything like that. Like you don't hear right. them saying like no to somebody. And she, mm-hmm. it's not like she was wild now or anything. She was literally a kid. You yeah, know, I was like ten. I yeah. had to be like ten. So I don't know, if, kids. right? Yeah. I don't know if it was more so like a protective measure at that point or what it was because it was an elder that we were like really close to. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. but I remember we were surprised. I got especially after all of the. Because he was also Pressing. putting that pressure on you, mm-hmm. but then once you were like, "All right, I'll do it," it was like, "Oh, you're not ready." Yeah. He, yeah. Might been, he might have been off that old, oh, you know. He like the <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie, y'all. Like I remember, I got mouthy with him a couple times. Remember. Like, we'd yes, be at his know. house, and I'd be like, why don't you go up and go get it? Like, because he would always tell his wife, like, go get this, go get that. Like, basically treating her as a slave. Like, right. you know, our mom, she was very independent. Like, she was like, oh, no, like, I run this stuff. So, I, yeah. I, I told him, like, why don't you go up and get it? You know what I mean? For so, real. I've, I've played him as a place a couple times, and he's probably <laughs> yeah. just like, she's not ready. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, the brothers can't deal with yeah. this. Because yeah. I think they knew that they just couldn't really tell me what to do because at the end of the day like I was just going to do what I wanted to do anyways right yeah because since Michaela's been a kid she's been very like standing on business yeah Yeah. tell me what to do yeah whatever it is that she wanted to do she's like gonna do you know she wasn't you weren't really 
easily influenced by people. Mm-mm. And I yeah. think, okay, that gets kind of into like the social groups within the organization. Uh, tell uh, us, yeah, this is good. Yeah, tell us your experience with that. Oh, my goodness. You know what witness kids or witness peers like? Oh, I was sick of them. Like, <laughs> she was sick of, she went through a whole stage of like not wanting to go to any parties. I'm not going to tell your story for you, but that was right. what I remember. Go uh-huh. ahead. Um, I really did it. You know what I mean? Because the best way to describe it was, like, if you think about it in school, I would describe them as the awkward kids that no one really messes with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they just didn't know how to be cool. And, like, me and Lex, like, we always knew how to be cool with everyone. Right. But God forbid. And it was easy, like, yeah. You just be yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, God forbid, like, we're talking to the opposite sex. Mm-hmm. We're going to be in front of everyone. Like, at the convention, at the assembly hall. Oh, now you guys gotta watch out for us. So, yeah. like, they're mad at us. And we're like, we're just not socially awkward. Right. Yeah. It was made to be, like, so much of a bigger yeah. deal than it actually was. Like, yeah. we had a friend, I've talked about him before, like, multiple times because um, he's not with us anymore. Yeah. And so, him and Michaela were best friends friends for like yeah. the longest time but he was like my brother i never had you know yeah I mean, he, like, was, he was he was so to me. protective over her like mm-hmm. and it was never anything like weird but they were really close and remember how many times people would talk to you guys about that because yeah. they'd be sitting wow. next okay we used to go and visit different conventions just because we wanted to see people it wasn't because we were there to listen to anything yeah, like, that was the last thing on yeah. our mind especially when you went to one it's like why you really got to write and pay right. attention like to this one because I am in. Yes, and also like sometimes some of your friends would be in a different, in a different like convention, you yeah, know. So you would go just to see like all of your friends in one place, you know. Yeah. And so we would travel with him a lot of the times. His name was David, and so we would travel with him a lot of the times. And he, man, he used to drive so fast. You remember how fast he used to, he used to, drive, to drive so fast? Yes. Yeah. Like, at the same time, like he always be sure we were okay. Yeah. yeah. So there was always jokes being made, like, "Oh, Lexi's the chaperone," and "Oh, Michaela and David." And you were only like sixteen. It was, he was really, like twenty something years yeah. old. Yeah. Was, they made it really weird. And they, it, they made it very like weird. Yeah. Very weird. And we were all just really close because they were close to this other family too. And we were really close to those boys too, you mm-hmm. know? Like, we just always hung out together. Uh, and um, yeah, people just made it so awkward, it, that whole situation. You know, I feel uh, like they envied us a lot just because a lot of the females in the organization were very socially awkward. They're awkward. Especially they were weird. when it came down to the opposite sex. Yes. Yeah. They would literally blow uh, things out of proportion. proportion. Like, like, somebody would literally <laughs> say, like, oh, your dress looks nice or your hair looks nice today. Or simple gestures of, of like, leading them into, like, a car or like letting them go in front of you was made yeah. to be huge like huge. I'm gonna marry him like look yeah. at what he did for me like it was just in- I feel bad for the brothers that were in the organization the ones that were like fairly normal because that's what they yeah. had to deal with was like very awkward women mm. but the women also had to deal with to say very it was on awkward both sides men yeah. because that was the culture of you shouldn't have a friendship with somebody of the opposite sex no Unless yeah. you are trying to marry them. Yeah. Like, it's that drastic. Like, don't text this person unless you yeah. want to get married. They, or don't yeah. hang on unless you want to get married. I remember, do you remember, um, we went to the hall with her mother. But she was dating her boyfriend at the time. And they were at the convention. And they were sharing a blanket. I told this story before. Uh-huh. Did you? Okay. Yes. I was just like, are you kidding me? It became me? like yeah. the, talk, the whole talk of the Keenum Hall. Like, I don't understand. Everybody that. was talking about the this couple at the convention just because they, they were on the ground floor and they yeah. were sharing a blanket. And I actually think at that time, they weren't even boyfriend and girlfriend. They were engaged to be yeah. married. Yeah. It was something like that. And I was just like, so if I share a blanket with my grandfather, what does that mean? You know what right. I mean? Because at the end of the day, like, yeah, they're not being cold. For real. And it's like they were being sleep. sneaky. They're doing it in front of everyone. And it was literally just from the lap down. So it was yeah. just like. They acted like it's the pop, the hole in the oh popcorn bucket goodness. thing or something. Like it, was just, it was just, yeah. it was ridiculous. And I think we were always just either liked or very just disliked just because we were cool with everybody and yeah. they didn't like that at all. Especially yeah. like the females there because they would have like a little schoolgirl crush on somebody and mm-hmm. they'd see us talking to them just as friends. Oh, I don't we like to her. Everybody. They're trying to get with him and I was just like, girl, girl this is, they this is not, right. not for us. Okay. <laughs> right. yeah. 
Pro- what would work better for you is if you became my friend and then we can like you know help you be regular right yeah, yeah. that would be Show better some for you. gestures or something like yeah. man like and they were like at the time i can't believe it because at the time like they would be like 26 like the one the one female we we're really close with mm-hmm. she was like 26 and i'm like 12 yeah. And she was just so awkward. awkward. And I'm yeah. just like, she would make I felt bad for her. the biggest deal out of nothing. Like, this one guy she had a crush on forever. Mm-hmm. He, like, went to her video. Oh, she replayed that video for the whole night. <laughs> I was like, oh, he likes me. Did it, did it, did I'm just like, oh, girl. Like, because like, you, like, you want to be supported, but you also, <laughs> and especially at that age, like, I know for me at least, like, I didn't really know how to, like, tell somebody. Mm-mm. I didn't. Get it. I didn't know how to tell. And she somebody. would hold me back from telling them because I'd be like, I want to tell them. Michaela, don't seriously. I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's like, so just, embarrassing. Just let them drown. <laughs> She's yeah. always been the real one, and I'm over here like, yeah. Like, yeah. Just like no, because no, I'm not gonna so kill your dream, you know. <laughs> and yeah. I'll tell her what it is. Yeah, it's gonna be delusional. They're gonna be more salty down the line when they find yeah. it out. Yeah. Michaela used to be mad at me because, especially in our one friend group, like. There was this girl. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh, she hated her. me, okay? Uh, but like uh, uh. as a Joe witness, you're not really supposed to you're not supposed to hate anybody, okay? You're supposed to still like try to be friends with them and you're not supposed to, you know, like Yeah, keyword supposed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're, it's, I was really trying to follow what I was supposed to do. Right. So the girl did not like me, okay? And I didn't really like her either, but like I would try we both would try to fake like each other. You know right. what I mean? And so anytime like we would make plans, because I remember we made plans to go out in service before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My sister was so mad. Michaela was like, are you kidding me? You're going to go out in service with her? <laughs> I was just sick of her. I was really just sick of her. Because like one thing about it is I will get real disrespectful. Like when it comes down to like my sisters and like, <laughs> someone I really care about, like I will use my stuff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I did not play with that. And like at the time... Lex was just so sweet and people would just walk over her and she would just take it and I'd be like oh heck no reminds me of that graduation party we had a graduation party to go to and the one of the females I just didn't like's mom oh she was just ignorant mm-hmm. and I just saw I remember people coming up to us and I forgot about that. she was like your sister's crying so after I heard that like I'm Back mad like oh I gosh. see nothing but red I'm shaking like For I go sure. over there I didn't even acknowledge her I was like sis what's wrong you know and she's like yeah. wanted to say something like oh I didn't touch her yet I looked at her like, and you're not going to. I was like, <laughs> mind you, Michaela is like 16 at the time. I was time. young. Exactly. No, maybe younger than that. You were I like was, 15. I was like 14. I was uh, like 14. She and was young. The mom was like old enough to she be like 40. My grandma. Like she had, 50. She had yeah. a grandkid that was older than me. I was like, and you're not going to touch her. You know what I mean? I was right. like, you're tripping. And she tried to get in my she face. So and I was not fucking down. I was yeah. like, what? Like, what do you really want to do? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> because I will really, like, I will go in on you. Right. Like, you get down. Oh, and for the whole graduation party, like, you know, I don't condone violence. But at the same time, you know, you need to put your foot down. Because you're not going to keep walking over my sister. So for real. I was not playing. Like, I was shaking. Like, people oh, had to break us up. I was there. like, what are you trying to do? Like, you're tripping. You yeah, know what I mean? There's some characters. And I think yeah. that there's a lot of people that are within the organization that they t- they purposely will test their limits because at the end of the day, they know that they can hold something over you. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they're like, oh, well, I'll just go to your elders. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not me. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Go to them. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you. They know how it was. <laughs> that's the culture. I remember uh, around the time I first started studying and going to the open gyms, I got banned from the gym a few times because <laughs> I'm still one foot in, one foot out. And so what would happen, you had these people been Jehovah's Witnesses their whole life. And of course, with basketball, that bring out the competitive. Cost. Yeah, so what happened, people would take it too far and I'll go, what you trying to do? And then mm-hmm. this is where elders, hey, we supposed to be witnesses. No. Like yeah. he just they, bumped like he, bumped It was past the bump and it was past somebody talking reckless and it's like, all right, well, let's take it a little mm-hmm. step further. Oh, um, we supposed to be witnesses. No, don't. So I will always get put out of gyms or I wasn't welcome to witness stuff because I would be willing to get violent. But it's like, don't let people 
these Jehovah's Witness people test people's patience, mm. and when somebody willing to take it there, be like, want to pull the, right. the Christian card. And, and that happens all yeah. the time. You have people that are constantly like sneak dissing you or dissing you straight to your face, and oh, they yeah. just expect you to take the higher road and you to be the mm-hmm. better person. But they're like bullies, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they, they do it on purpose because they know that they can in the religion, you know, because mm-hmm. they're like, oh, well, if you're a good Christian, you're not. And so I very much fell into that space where like yeah. I wasn't going to say anything, you know what I mean? I was always taking the high road, like, out, like, always. Oh, but she no, could, though, because she had a sister that did it. For real. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking road. the high road. I'm taking the low road. I'm taking the next boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, and it's crazy because... Like, that specific woman, like, she was grown, and she would just really bully me. Like, her husband she used to be, people. like, she did. But so she like, had, like, mm-hmm. mental issues. And, it, it, and I don't give a dang. <laughs> like, I have every <laughs> mental issues. Yeah. Like, I got some, too. How about that? Like, because <laughs> <laughs> like, do you remember when, because her husband used to be a judge. Yeah. And I guess they must have, like, did some, like, snooping, like, about our dad or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she tried to, like, say something about our dad to me. And I flipped out. Like, I was so mad. Like, I didn't go around them. Like, I'm not messing with you because how dare you? Like, right. you want to talk about this, yeah. but we know some stuff about your daughters, too. You know? Right. And, don't we? And them be Ooh, the I spill the tea. Don't, because I tried to do it last time. <laughs> I want to spill the tea, don't y'all, because it's crazy. Exactly right. Like, if you would have knew, if y'all would have knew the tea, Child. y'all would be like, how dare she, can she say anything? Like, she's stripping. <laughs> but, but there's truly people, like, I don't know, that organization definitely attracts some cuckoos. Yeah. And, yeah, um, that's where all the weirdos get to fit in at. Yeah. 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 And it, a lot of people are really good at pushing buttons and they do it purpose. Yeah, which is so crazy just because, you know, like they always preach about being nice, being accepting, you know what I mean? Uh, but honestly, it's like the quite opposite, exact opposite, you know? Yeah, so it's very yeah. hypocritical, which I never could get down with. You and it's know just, what I mean? it's a very judgmental like space yeah. to be in. Like people always say it all the time, but people are feeling like they're constantly being judged while they're in that religion that yeah. once you leave you like almost don't know who you are because oh no all you can hear is like other people's opinions of you 24 you know? 7 you are judged the moment you walk in the hall like this go over heads so what time you get to the hall mm-hmm. no rewind that what kind of car you drive for one mm-hmm. it's too nice what time you that get part. there are you on time are you extra early so you can talk and what are you wearing what you wearing where you sit at? Do you sit in the front? Do you sit in the back? Yeah. Do you raise your hand during it? Did you have your uh, lesson done? Mm-hmm. Then do you stay after? Right. Do you leave as soon as it's over? Mm-hmm. Do you uh, stay for field service? Yeah. Also, it's like, I don't even know how much judgment yeah. I just listed just within Did just you going. get money in the contribution box? Yep. You know, how much did you put in there? What, yeah. How's your hair type? What color? How many ear piercings do you have? Yeah. We yeah, can go on and on Did you shave back on. then? Even something yes. like this. Like, she has blue eyelashes on right now. And if she were at the Keenum Hall, like, that would be judged. So, like, even <laughs> random expressions like that is just... You're just judged off of everything. For real. I remember I got judged. I was young. I was like eight, and I had like at Eden Park they used to give you like the kids the little um, fake smiley cookie tattoos. Yeah. And I had it on my arm, and I went on service, and I literally got count- counseled for it. Like I was <laughs> I'm like surprised. over a, a smiley cookie fake tattoo. I was like eight. Like I couldn't even understand what he was really trying to tell me, and Dude, I'm just real. like. They were like, that's the start of it all. Now look at her. She has a whole sleeve. (laughs) (laughs) But that's really how they view things. Like, they probably tell the story like, oh, I remember she had a smiley cookie on her, smiley cookie tattoo. She always used to like those fake tattoos. And now look at her. She has Mm -hmm. tattoos everywhere. We're talking about them too. (laughs) Remember you was a square? And now look at you. A grown square. square. And it's just so crazy. I remember in high school, I got a Foot Locker job. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, just when I started getting, like, all my tattoos and stuff. And someone from the hall, like, seen me working there. And they literally left from the side of the mall that I was on to the whole different side (laughs) looking at me. I'm like, what the heck? But, like, I had had bright blue hair at the time. Like, I was very... I liked all different colored hair. So, hey, I had bright blue hair. But remind you, you never got baptized. I never got baptized. So, technically, they could have talked to me. You know what I mean? But they were just like, oh, no. like Extremists. Yeah. I was just like, okay. (laughs) That's fine with me. (laughs) That is crazy. Okay. So, was there, like, a certain point for you 
that made you not want to be a witness anymore? Or was it like an accumulation of things? Mm. Or do you remember anything specific that was like, yeah, this is it for me? Honestly, I feel like I always kind of knew deep down that I just could not see my life <laughs> as being a JW. Uh-huh. It was more so just waiting till I'm old enough to make that decision. You know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. when you're a child, you, you don't can't. have a dang choice. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, so I kind of just tolerated it, but definitely us having such a big friend group in the religion helped me open my eyes and kind of confirm why I don't see myself in the religion or yeah. I couldn't see myself in the religion for the long run. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like with me, you know, I don't like being two faced or feeling like I have to put a whole different persona on walking in right. the hall. So once I hit like high school age, that's exactly what I was doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like I knew really. how I was outside of the hall, mm-hmm. but then it was like I'm just someone completely different in the hall. Yeah. Right. And that's just not how I wanted to be. Like I didn't feel right going out in service and preaching to these people when I'm not even following it because I think it's <laughs> BS. You know what I mean? <laughs> So it was more so just waiting till I can hit that age to really just be like, I'm just, yeah, like yeah. just to not go. Which is so crazy because I will say like, um, there's a lot of witnesses that have like really strict parents, uh-huh. but we really didn't grow up that way. Like uh-huh. we didn't have like strict parents, like telling us like, you have to do this, you have to do that. Yeah. Like right. we, we didn't have that, you know? Yeah. And so, um, it was never like pressure uh, no yeah, from yeah, our yeah. parents to, like get baptized mm, or yeah. as a matter of fact I tell this story all the time but when <laughs> I went to get baptized <laughs> my mom was like are you sure that's what you want to do and I remember being so mad at her like inside I'm like how dare she ask me something like that yeah. like but she was really like trying to look out for me because she knew you know what was going was on in the back. yeah yep. that's yeah. plus though having a parent that's like that yeah. Even like my grandparents was the strict ones, yeah. But having a disfellowship mom like that kind of gave it some leeway to yeah. where she wasn't pushing it yes. like that. Like, well, you know, we're gonna go to the memorial or we're gonna go to the meeting this weekend. It's like, Ugh, I don't want to yeah. go this weekend, but yeah. it wasn't that push to where yeah. we still got a little freedom. Yeah. For us, it was still scheduled. Like we were still going to the meetings on Wednesdays and like mm-hmm. on the weekends and the memorials and the assemblies and the conventions, all of that. But it's like we still had the freedom of choice. Yeah, you, know you were what I mean? forced like, to to join the whole program and yeah. be a pioneer and all that. We went to stuff. a whole church whenever we were younger. Like, yeah. we just vis- I remember we went to that that guy came and picked us up in the van. Yeah, that was creepy. <laughs> it was very creepy. <laughs> they get around it, but they did pick us up in a van. Yeah, the and they a van full of kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they come they come up into um, areas where they know there's a bunch of kids that are going to be outside, and they're like, oh, you know. Uh, we have this church thing. It was we went to like a play or something. It, it was something like they had to sing some songs. Like I don't know. That wasn't for me either. I was just there for the snacks because they were I like we also have there snacks. snacks. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll and go. because our I friends were going. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like we about to kick it just at the church. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I think it definitely made me at least feel like it really wasn't a big deal with me just deciding not to go just because I did. Like we did have a good mom that. Yeah. Wasn't like, oh, I'm not going to talk to you. Like, you're this, yeah. you're that. You know what I mean? Because at the yeah. end of the day, like, we're pretty good kids. You know, it's just that we just didn't want to do that. So, yeah. we were, cool. yeah, very grateful for that, though. You know, because talking about, like, our friend David, it was kind of different for him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which is unfortunate, but that happens to a lot of people. Yeah. Which I feel like we still have people that we used to be friends with that are still in the truth, but we know it. that don't no. want to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's messed up, but. Thankfully, that wasn't our situation. Yeah. yeah. They helped out a lot. Yeah. It really did. But no matter what, I think they just had a new... So yeah. basically for you, it, it was an accumulation and always you had the gut feeling. Yeah. But then the friend group thing... Really just opened it. my eyes. Yeah. It confirmed Because you felt like you were being fake. Yeah. Like everybody. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, like it's, it's all fake. It just comes down to we all be in denial. Like, oh, well... We're imperfect. Like no, like yeah, cut the BS. Like this is a call. I just didn't like, like you know, with me, like when it's like you can't do this and that, it makes me want to do it more. So, I feel like that's a normal human nature thing. Yeah. yeah, it really is. You know, like and just like with the tattoos and stuff, I feel like it's like my form of expression. You know, like I always right. express myself through tattoos and hair. Like I've always been like that. I used to leave red hair dye in their bathroom. Yeah. Like they used to be All so over sick at me. But I was always doing that. Yeah, but you. Yeah, and yeah. I'm a good person. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like we need 
to be judged or get told like, oh, well, you're a good person because you look like this. Especially be- when you're yeah. young, teenage years to your yeah. 20s. Like, this is the... Like, you ain't never been here before and you figuring this out. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like this interview so far has gone so quick. So we're going to have to have you back on for, yeah. like, a part two. But um, the transition phase, like, how do you feel like that has been? Do you see differences between, like, being in versus being out? How is that for you? Yeah, I definitely have seen differences. You know what I mean? I definitely feel, like, less judgmental. Like, I've run into some real good people yeah. that would actually make a good fit for the whole... JW outlook that they try to make them seem like how they are yeah, versus their actual JWs, which is so weird. Because um, you're taught that it's not. Yeah, that way. yeah. No. But like, I'm a thousand percent happy with me choosing, you know, the way of just not associating myself with that. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Um, of course, like I respect anybody else who wants to be in that. You know, like that's you. Like you yeah. live your life how you are. You know. Right. Um, but for me, like, I would just expect the same in return. Yeah. So. That's how I feel, too. Like, there's nothing wrong with however you decide yeah. to live your life. But mm. don't try, if I'm giving you the common courtesy and the respect mm-hmm. not to try to impede all of my mm-hmm. ideas mm-hmm. and things on you, then I, I expect the same respect, like, in yeah. return. Like, don't try yeah. to pitch to us and get your hours in. Like, yeah. like, please don't do that because that's a quick way of you just getting blocked. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's so much to talk about in yeah. life. You don't have to, like, try to push your beliefs down somebody's throat. Like, that's yeah. something that's very irritating yeah to me. yeah but this goes over their heads because their mind is not programmed their no. mind is if it ain't this is the devil it's evil yeah and right. whatever you're doing bad and i gotta convince you or you lost yeah, and right. so with us our it's mind like lost for me yeah it's like our mind is so open we can see like all right you got this religion that one that one and thousands more mm-hmm. all right you just part of that one cool yeah do that but with them it's like no it's this or nothing yeah and which so they, i can't get down with like no. that's crazy you know what i mean because yeah. You know, for us, like, we still have very close people to us that we love a lot that are still in it. And I respect it, you know. Like, I don't talk about it because I'm not going to make you feel bad. Like, sometimes it do help people. But just for us, you know, it's just not our path. And that should be okay, too. So, you know, it's just all about respect and common courtesy when it comes down to it. And try not to get your little service hours in. (laughs) (laughs) Because you're not going to change our mind. Yeah, We spoke about that in our religion versus spiritual video Uh where it's like there's more than one way to skin a cat there's more than one way for you to live like a peaceful life you know and the way that you are taught like the way that we were taught being born in and everything it's like if you don't live this way the world is going to Mm. eat you up and the world is going to do this and you're going to they want us to live in fear yeah Yeah. and that's the lowest (laughs) vibration for humans is fear fear yes and like to be honest now, like, we have so many messed up things that happen in this world. Mm. The last thing that we need to be fearful of is something else, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or yeah. thinking that our life is limited or anything like that. Like, that's that crazy part. to me. But, you know, like, as, like, you know, me being, like, a new mom and stuff, like, I would never enforce my children into doing something like that unless they got old enough to, like, choose to mm. do that. And yeah. if they choose to do that, then okay. Like, I still love you. Like, yeah. you do you. But... That's just my type of parenting style. I know everyone's a little different, but yeah. that's just the way it's I just, be. It feels like it's... I, I think about this a lot for, like, one day whenever we have kids because you just never know what your child is going to choose to do. Right. You know what right. I mean? And it's so scary to think about it, too. Mm-hmm. Like, if they were... I, I believe in just, like, educating my children in everything. So I'm going right. to give you anything that I know about, mm-hmm. and it's your decision on what you're going to do with that. Yeah. But it's so scary to think about it because, like, I know different people who have, like, kids who have cut off their parents yeah, mm-hmm. because they're so deeply indoctrinated. Yeah, and right. that is so crazy to me. Like, I birthed you. I, right. Yeah. I don't you know what it's You came out of me. Yep. Listen, my sons cannot cut me out their life. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That is not an option. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, by that time, yeah. this organization going to be so down the drain by the time kids old enough to make that choice that yeah. at least Jehovah's Witnesses ain't going to be no worry. Like, yeah. this would be something... In this stuff is something, kid. you know, but like it's a hard family. Different. Yeah, but like yeah. with us, you know, like we love, we love, you know what I mean? Like, right. we, love. we love, we don't care if you're purple, blue, we don't care. Like, yeah. you just do whatever you want, but we care for you, you know, we're gonna try to educate you, and that's yeah. just my plan how I'm gonna raise my children as they get older, too. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know, but one thing I will say, you know, the elders want you to entrust in them. 
but there is some sketchy people without organization. So mm-hmm. you need to watch over your kids, for honestly. Real. And that's something real. I'm yeah. not coming for your parenting, but parent to parent, you need to watch your kids. You know what yeah. I mean? Because, you know, you want to protect your children, but not knowing some of the big biggest predators are in the hall. And they won't exactly. tell you. And this is the best won't. place for them to hide because this is a perfect place yes. unlike the world this is this yes. and it's like no this is the same world as everywhere else right you yeah. get like, all types of people in that too and yeah. yeah and like you know like i watch every single video that they post you know what mm-hmm. i mean and i read some of y'all's comments and i'm just saying please watch over your babies because you you don't want to mess don't up once it's late no. it's too late and mm-hmm. you need to look at everybody and really just be very care take put keep your kids close yeah, That's all I'm going to say. You know what I mean? From personal experience and of us knowing certain people, mm-hmm. it's just, I'm not going to risk that. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's what I mean? It's messed up because like, you go into it and they want you to take your guard down. Yeah. And yeah. you're Don't. taking your guard down just to leave an opening for these predators to be able to come into your life and you know take advantage of your kids. And it's, yeah. it's just messed up because you have nobody there that is going to tell you like, hey, this person... Yeah. got in trouble for this this you know they don't do because they don't go to jail for it yeah. they get this fellowship yeah. and they come right back and it's like yeah. serious things you know like as we got older we found out certain things about certain brothers and sisters that we were really close to and would be mm-hmm. around as children and they're so closest like, to the kids and they're Always. closest to the children like so once again just keep in your mind you know like the brothers always preach trust in them but really you need to trust in yourself yeah and you need to have your kids and be your kids protector yeah seriously as much as the organization tries to make a difference between in being inside and being outside there truly is no different like people are people and yeah. we were just talking about this but this is literally how people get stuck in cults because they put something on a pedestal thinking oh this is absolutely safe <laughs> nothing is absolutely yeah. safe not yes. in this world not yet yes. okay it's please just, just like educate yes. yes educate yourself please parents like at the end of the day you're supposed to be your children's protector and be on that you know what i mean like yeah. don't feel like you're crazy don't feel like you're being extra because you're not because that's how yeah. they'll make you feel too yeah you know? they it will oh it's, it's the brothers and jehovah's holy right. spirit is protecting no. like ain't mm-hmm. no protection in there no. right and it's i can not. be crazy like yes i will yeah. be crazy so that's all i just wanted to add in because i do read some of those comments and i just feel like <laughs> parent to we parent got, please yeah. <laughs> in there, okay yeah, yeah. We're gonna be in this one too <clears throat> Yeah, especially with you all tattooed, because we always get about our tattoo. <laughs> I got a sleeve, and what about it? <laughs> right, get over it. Sorry, you ain't got no <laughs> But at the end of the day, it's all love on our end, you know what I mean? We're right. always just talking about our experiences, so, you know, if you don't like it, just don't watch us. <laughs> Especially if you watch it this long, you you a fan, right? If you, if you got something bad to say, I'll, I'm not about to sit and watch no clan rally for thirty minutes. I don't want to see that. Yeah, that part. Yeah, that exactly. way. Exactly. So, all right. So we have one last question. Um, what do you feel like your like? How do you feel like your spirituality has like evolved now? Like, where are you at with that? Um. So I believe in God. You know what I mean. Um. I don't go with a specific religion. Mm-hmm. I believe in a little bit of everything. I'm very big in spirituality and like manifesting and all of that. But I believe in a little bit of everything. You know what mm-hmm. I mean. I just choose not to just have a certain religion I go to. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. I like it. Yes. No yeah. wrong with that. Yes, sir. All right. I think <laughs> that wraps it up. You guys, don't forget about our healing journal. We made this specifically for people going through the transition phase. And if you feel like, I don't know who I am anymore, this will help you figure out yes, who you are. get you one. Okay. I have my copy. Okay. So I don't know about right. y'all, but y'all need to get it together and get you one. Period. Yeah. Okay. And on that note, <laughs> hit us on our Instagram at Awaken Truths IG. And see what else they got to do? Don't forget to like, comment, and, and subscribe. subscribe. Catch y'all next time. Peace, y'all.